Hi students, we are going to start with our very first unit in chemistry today. It's unit 1 and it talks about the laboratory. In laboratory, we always begin with something which we call as a scientific method. And a scientific method has all these components embedded into that. It always begins with a simple question. Then, that beginning question leads to some observation or research. An observation could be qualitative or quantitative and we'll go over that in a minute. But after you have some observations, you come up with a hypothesis. All right. Let me tell you one thing. A hypothesis has to be valid in order for it to go further. And again, we will discuss that in further. Hypothesis goes into experiment. We perform the experiment. We obtain some data. And after we get the data, we analyze the data. And after we analyze data, either it supports our hypothesis and we achieve our goal or it may not support our hypothesis. So if it does support our hypothesis, we get the results and we can repeat the process one more time and we can confirm our hypothesis. If the hypothesis gets refuted, then the process is to go back. So we go back again, think and come up with another hypothesis. All right, this is what the whole process clearly looks like. We have a question. And the question always is around subsystem or a process. When beginning question is ready, we do observation. And as I mentioned, observation could be two different types. There could be qualitative observation, which is based on some description or could be like a feeling. How does it feel? How does it look? Uh, color, clarity, texture. Is it rough? Is it smooth? All those will be qualitative observation. And the second one is quantitative that deals with numbers like mass, volume or length. If somebody says, what is the mass of that golf ball or tennis ball? We're going to say, okay, it is 40 grams. So number 40, that is a indicator of having um, a quantitative data there, quality observation there. All right. If you have a hypothesis, remember what we talked about, a hypothesis must be a valid hypothesis. And in order for a hypothesis to be a valid hypothesis, there are two important criteria. It must meet those two criteria. The first one there, it should be using a conditional language. And the keywords in those are may or might. If the words are may or might, it indicates that that is a conditional hypothesis. The second very important thing is it must be testable. We should be able to perform the experiment and we should be able to collect the data. Otherwise, it's of no use. So if the hypothesis is valid, then we move on further to experiment. We perform the experiment, we get the data, and as I mentioned, uh, either the hypothesis gets uh, confirmed or it gets refuted. So basically what we're talking about is a scientific method is nothing but a simple cycle and it keeps on going on its own. All right, let's take some examples and figure out if this hypothesis are valid or not. So here's the first example and this example here there are two cats Tigger and Nala and then there's a hypothesis made based upon the observation with the food preference which food they like to eat. So the, the hypothesis is Tigger enjoys his food more than Nala. Is it a conditional hypothesis? I don't see a word may or might. That means it is not a conditional hypothesis. Okay. How about testing the hypothesis? Are we able to test the hypothesis? 
there is a word enjoy how are we going to figure out cat is enjoying the food are we going to see smile are we going to see something else there is no way we can confirm what is the degree of enjoyment for the cat uh, so in scientific words we will not be able to test the hypothesis so it is not a testable hypothesis both these things makes the hypothesis as not valid okay so we cannot do the experiment and prove this hypothesis at all let's take one more example in this example if you read carefully it's talking about a truck and it talks about a decrease in temperature and increase in pressure so this hypothesis made based upon the different seasons and if there is a particular amount of air what happens so the hypothesis is if the temperatures decrease it may cause the pressure in the tires to decrease look at that word may may is the key word there which makes the hypothesis conditional so that's a good point okay now is it testable can we test the hypothesis sure because what it tells you is if temperature goes down pressure in the tires is going to go down or we can still say temperature goes up and pressure will be going up so either way we can control the temperature and we can record the pressure with some equipment and we can record the data so definitely this hypothesis becomes a valid hypothesis because it's conditional and it's also testable hypothesis okay let's take one more example in this example we are going to talk about the color of leaf and that's a statement if that leaf color changes is related to the temperature then exposing plants to low temperature will result in changes in leaf color there is the word will there is no may or might which makes it a non conditional statement a non conditional hypothesis can we test it sure we can perform the experiment we can have different temperatures and we can find out if the color changes or not so we can certainly test it so it is not conditional non conditional hypothesis but it is testable remember what we talked about a hypothesis has to satisfy both these conditions it is non conditional that makes it not valid we cannot perform the experiment and we cannot get some data on this all right here's an example and i would like you all to read this example and when you read through that there are few questions i would like you to answer the questions and when you come back to the class we are going to check the answers all right so let me give the questions to you the questions are we need to find out what the problem is with that problem the beginning question is there you are going to find out the original hypothesis which was made then you can also write down how was it tested then the experiments were done so you have to find out if the hypothesis was supported or it was refuted and then based upon the research done what should be the new hypothesis you can propose any new hypothesis so i hope you enjoyed the video and you understood what a scientific process looks like so thank you for watching the video i'll see you in class